G'day viewers. Welcome to another super cool repair video from the Goat Shed, located in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. So today is Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. It's 18 degrees Celsius outside, which is approximately 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Not a cloud in the sky, going to be a lovely day. So last Saturday, which was the 21st, we were presented with uh, Gottlieb's Jungle Queen. Now this machine has been brought to us from the central coast of New South Wales, not too far from us here. Jungle Queen was another Krinsky design with uh, artwork by Gordon Morrison. It was July 77 and they made 6,795 of these, according to the IPDB. Now, one thing that Graham and Marco used to do in all their books when they highlighted a pinball machine, they would also highlight what game was produced before and what game after. Okay, so in this case, Team 1 was produced prior to this game, followed by Mustang. So Mustang's the two-player version of uh, Bronco. So sadly we see too many multiplayer games, which is too many more score rules to fix. But uh, I guess that's it, isn't it? So this machine is going to need a little bit of work done. It looks like the playfields had a fair bit of work done on it. Now we asked the owner, as we always do, how long he'd owned this game for, and he told us that he'd owned it for a bit over 10 years but hasn't played it in the last year or so because it started to play up now one of the things this game apparently is doing is quite often when the ball drains it adds 100 points to each player now this means that it has a typical fault which originally was seen in Gottlieb's fast draw or quick draw yeah it's actually fast draw because it's the four player game that has that problem fast draw surf champ royal flush and now it looks like we've got it with this anyway there is a modification so we'll carry that out regardless on this game so here's the play field it looks quite nice I'd say when this chap's bought this look at that the apron looks really good doesn't it is that an original or? No, I think that's a. I can see the bubbles in it, so you can even see that bubble there. So someone's put an apron decal on it. It's had, had mylar on it, as we, well, mylar on it, as we can see. Inserts there are a little bit cupped here. New pop bumper caps, drop targets look pretty good. I notice, uh, I think the guy said the ball doesn't kick out of this left hole. We'll have a look at that. What are the drop targets like on this side? Yeah, I, I, I'd say this has been done up at some point in time. What do you reckon, Spank? Eh? It is a quite a, why is a pretty machine? The Jungle Queen, Jungle Princess. I love the tiger on the side and the tiger on the play field here. I like tigers. Even the rubbers are, are all in pretty good condition. Someone cracked a bit. No, it's not too bad. So we'll have a close look at that. It's double rubbered there. Maybe they were getting balls caught there. It's a strong possibility. That side's not. All the plastics look in good condition. None broken or chipped. No, they're all pretty good. These little ones often break. I'd say it's had a new plastic set put on too. Alright, let's have a look underneath and see what needs to be addressed. Well, it looks pretty clean inside. The motorboard looks good. The, the score motor isn't too bad. It's pretty good. Oh, there's something interesting. Notice this one. It's, it was made for the German market. There it is. You can even see Germany down there between those wires and the German language there. 
the importer was Nova Apparate in Hamburg in Germany. Huh. Okay. So somewhere in there we'll have a the 500 point add bonus relay, which I think is the is the E relay. You can see E there, and then we'll have the P relay just down here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. There. The P relay. That's the where we'll be doing that modification. We'll document that for you when we do it. And I do emphasise that modification is not developed or designed by ourselves. It was done by Chris Hibbler and a few of his friends back in the day, back in 1999. Uh, and one guy who uh, attributed to it is uh, no longer with us, but his name is Steve Sharland. So, um, good on you. Thanks for doing that, Steve. Okay, the coin unit, what's it like? This is one of those coin units that's a sub uh, uh, steps back, a subtracting coin unit. Oh, that's all stepping forward nicely. Finds the match on the way back. Under the playfield doesn't look too bad. Obviously this is a game with a, those style of flippers in it, these flipper mechs. There's the bonus unit, so what's it like on the subtract side? Oh, it's sticking, look at that. It's sticking. Yeah, that's not good. Needs a bit of work. That's okay. Triggers on the drop targets. Not too bad wear there. Okay, well we'll just have to go through it like we normally do. We'll get it out. And... But the good news is it's a far, fairly clean looking game. Now we've already started working on the back box mech. So we'll go and have a look at that in a moment. Um, there's Spanky just sitting on the chimes there having a look. What have we got? Um, oh, they've got those grommets in there rather than the, the big seal. So probably not have to do much work there. I don't know, we might polish those chimes up. There's the knocker. Good news is everything seems to be here in the game, which is always a bonus. Now there's Graham working on the score earls. Bit of work to do in there as usual. Yeah, I'm on the um, play four, so just these last four to look at and that should be it. Oh, good. Yep. So, there's the mech out as we always do. Now we found this wire here just laying around. Don't know where that goes yet. We'll have to try and figure that out. Maybe see what doesn't work or we're, we're a bit, we think it might come off the relay bank because it's really long and it starts here, down here possibly goes over, don't know, don't know, have to find out, <laughs> these things happen, now one really weird thing we do, uh, did find, okay, who can see what's wrong with that switch stack, anyone notice anything, well I'll tell you, there's one too many switches on there, someone's added this top stack, so they've had it soldered on with the lugs, There's no, no wires there anymore. Now, so, I don't know, maybe they've tried to do a mod to stop that extra 100 points adding on. God knows, but, and the really long screws, that was the first thing I noticed when I pulled this apart, those really long screws. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that extra switch off because it's not needed, there's no wires hooked up to it, it's not factory, it's an add-on. We're going to remove it. Here's the player unit itself being overhauled. There it is. All nice and shiny. It was pretty dirty. Um, the upstop wasn't broken on this, so that, that wasn't broken. But a lot of screws were loose. Now remember people, when you do rebuilds and things like that, check every screw. These screws were a little bit loose. Doesn't take long, it's worth doing. You don't want them coming undone part way through it. 
or not part way through it, we'll, you know, after you send the game back to somebody. So, here's the, uh, the match unit. We've already done that. That was pretty bad, that match unit. It's good now. There was a really, really powerful spring on the back over here. Um, but what the problem mainly was with this match unit, I'll just move that out of the road. What the problem really was, was that this, it's got a switch stack, a double switch stack in there. There they are. There was too much pressure, downward pressure on those switches, and they were riding on the black gear there. They were riding on it, or in the channel of it too deep, and it was causing it to stick rather badly. A little bit of fiddling around, so you have to adjust the... Um, normally, you, you wouldn't do it, but you had to adjust the long blade to get it right. Mm -hmm. So now it, it's working really well. Yep. That's one of those ones that haven't got a pin to take out. You've got to actually unscrew it, which can be a pain. Oh, these? The North the Nine unit. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah those two. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't come out of the gun. Yeah, yeah. Makes it a bit more awkward, wouldn't yeah. it? All right, so we're happily, happily finishing that off on the long end. Uh... So I won't be. We'll, we'll do this player unit now, and we've already checked continuity on all the wires and checked these resistors and made sure they're all right. Yeah. While you've got it apart, just check things. It's you know well worth it. As I said. You get one of these wires broken, and we've had them broken before. I think I pointed this out once before. We've had one of these wires, not necessarily on this game, broken sort of like there. It had, un it had unsolded itself, and it still sat there, so it was barely making contact, and it gave us a nightmare. I can't recall the game, but it had something to do with play replays. We couldn't get replays. And that's what the problem was. It was on a multiplayer game. I think it was on a Bronco, I think. Bronco? Yeah, I think it was on Bronco. Mm, okay. I don't remember. And of course we've got the at the moment we've got the uh credit unit all pulled apart. Here it is over here. So there's the the credit unit frame. And all the associated parts have all been been cleaned. The, it was it was seized up. Basically the um the shoulder screw. This particular error had, they used a lot of white grease, sorry about the shadows, so everything was clean. That jar there has kerosene in it, and that went in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, the reset, that's called the reset arm, it's it's all been cleaned up. That's your subtract pawl. There's your bushing, spider bushing we call it. Um, your escapement wheel. The good news is, often we find them where the one of the, these pins is missing. That's not the case. And we've polished up the the plungers. We're ready to go. All right, well, we'll carry on with this repair now. And we'll keep updating as we go. Well, we've completed the back box of the game. That's all done and dusted. So now we're on to the underside of the play field. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there's not an awful lot to do on the top side. It's in quite good condition. It's been well looked after. It's actually been mylard. And it looks like it recently had new rubbers on. So that's one thing we don't have to do. So there's Graham up there working. What are you doing? Um, I'm doing the snowshoes. Oh, okay. Now hold that up. On so the, on the bonus here. Here's an interesting little device we made: a block of wood with a screw going through it to hold the snowshoe out while we solder the wire, the braid on. So that's pretty good. So all the fiddly hanging yeah. down. Very simple. Yeah, it's very simple and it's, it's so good and um, you do pretty well right up to a, a, um, a four player player unit will fit on there. Um, well, you did, didn't you do the high hand and that's got 12 yeah, pins yeah, on it? Yeah, I think? that was good, yeah. Yeah. So it looks small but it's the right size. Yeah, it's pretty good. So that's only about like uh, 
Oh, gee, what? Um, oh, five inches square. Yeah, yeah, five, five Maybe inch four, square. Four, five inch square. About an inch and a half thick. Yeah. Just a um, scrap of wood we had hanging around the shed. Don't ask me for it in millimetres. I never ever converted. I should live in America. I'm still doing feet and inches. Okay. Um, so, like everything, we've, we've done a, a quick overview or look at this play field and, and discovered a few things. So, like always, this is a, this plunge is a bit sticky, it's not restoring very well. I think that's just a matter of a bad coil sleeve we'll have to change. We'll take the switches off the back and clean them, the scoring switches particularly. So look at the difference in that. You see that? One's been cleaned and, and repaired, and I've just got to do the other two. Okay, so the one in the right of the picture you can see is, is a lot newer. And um, it's not new, it's just been um, repaired and plugged. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we like to take them out. Now, sometimes the snowshoes get flat across the top. Yeah, those are pretty good. But they're nice and rounded, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So, if they get flat, that's when you get really bad grooves yeah. in the in the rivet contacts and you've got to spend a lot of time trying to clean them up and everything like that because they're a, a shocking thing to have to change if yeah. you need to change them. And it just goes down to the fact that they weren't never maintained very just well in the field. Makes it more reliable. It does. Yeah. So now, good. what we've got, we're just waiting in about an hour's time now Parts, some parts we ordered will arrive and we ordered two flipper kits. So you've got the O2 kit and the three, I think they call it AM or something kit for this particular style. Uh, we like to put flipper kits in. Oh, and there's a flipper kit coming in for Bankshot too, we, we had ordered. So Bank shot's pretty well done, but we're going to put a new flipper kit in that. Only other thing, we've had a bit of a, a cursory glance, and the bonus unit which lives in this area here. Remember earlier in the video, we said to you that when we had the play foot up in the air, we said that bonus unit is a bit sticky on the subtract. Well, it certainly is, and I'm going to show you a fault or a whoop on it when we get it out of the cleaner that's currently in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's got a loose rivet on the drive pull. So we'll have a, we'll have a bit of a look at that sh shortly. And I'm just having a look up the top there. See, that's got some LEDs in it up there and some incandescent, incandescent, there's an LED just there. And we've got to do the spoon switches. Uh, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Can you just hold a spoon switch up there, Graham? Yeah, well this one here, because the end of the straight switch has been bent. Ah, uh, okay. Library, so we've got to repair that as well. I'll just try and get that in the shot. There it is. Mm. So I don't know whether we've done that or that's how it was, but we've got it's got to be repaired. Okay, and they're very dirty yeah. on the. So that's the spoon switch. You can see it's just full of hardened gunk. So we'll soften that up with um, some cleaning material, probably Kero or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we'll spray some kerosene on that. Get a toothbrush, give it a clean, and give yeah. it a clean up with a Dremel. And then uh, probably a um, Q-tip. So all three pop bumpers aren't real, real good in that regard, are they? Um, we've, um, we're getting kits, aren't we, for the bumpers, or we're not sure? Um, I've changed the sleeves. Oh, well, we've run but out of... But actually, the, the the actual yokes and all that are pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. We're, we've run out of AC pop kits, and we've got to get more, but they've got to come from the States. But I think the springs are a bit ordinary, so okay. we might, might put new springs in. Putting putting pop bumper kits in, viewers, makes the world a difference to your pop bumpers. So, now, okay. he's got the um, trip bank in the service position there. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to do with that is we're going to make sure all the switches are clean, uh, check continuity through the yeah. circuits. They look pretty good. And check the coil sleeve on that as yeah. well. I've done these relays, they've been done. Just got to... Oh, those three there. I'm going to put them back in there. 
Okay. Left and right pump bumper. What's the yeah, set of one and the other one could be an alternator relay. It's got a lot of make brakes on it. What? What? Okay. What relay number is it? A. A. Yeah, I think it will be an alternating relay. And they're funny with Gottlieb machines. They you'd think they called the hold relay H for Harold, but they don't. They call it R for Robert or Richard, which is very strange. But that's the way it is. So we've got a fair bit of work cut out for us here, still to go. So like I said, I'm going to show you that worn part in that step unit next up. So here's the drive arm. And what the problem here is, is that we have, can you see that whole rivet moving? I'll turn it round. Now you watch, you'll see it. I don't know if you can see that, but the whole rivet, that rivet is spinning, right? It's simply come loose. There's not a lot of sideways or up and down lateral movement in it. It's just a fact that it's it's flopping around. Not such a bad thing. That's not the reason that it wasn't stepping right, but it wouldn't help. So while we've got this out, we're going to repair that. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to get a ball pane hammer, set that on the vise and tap it just lightly so we don't overdo it, and that will repair it. It's, the rivet has just come loose. Obviously, the, the rivet shouldn't move when the... But it is. All right, let's fix that. An enforcer tool. There you go, that's a big ball pane hammer. We do have a lighter one. So let me show you. So now, the rivet doesn't move. You've got to be careful, we could have hit that too hard, but it's pretty well almost, almost perfect. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so that should be good now. So that was a, a, an important thing to fix in that step unit. we just got to put it all back together now, put new coil sleeves in it, a few drops of oil in the right spot, as we've illustrated before, and away we go. Oh, there's Grant, oh, still working away on his stepper. Now just a reminder to stay tuned to the end of this video and you'll get to see how to repair that problem that we mentioned earlier concerning adding 100 points to each score once the ball drains and runs over the trough switch. This is a problem that you may encounter if you own any games such as Fast Draw, Surf Champ, Jungle Queen, Royal Flush, and one or two others. What's the other one, Graham? Uh, Bronco. Bronco. No, Bronco's only a... Uh, Bronco, yeah, Bronco's a four-player. Yeah, of course, Bronco. Yeah, so around that era. So how's that going? Is it just about done? Yeah, yeah, just got one, okay. wide, one wire to put on. All right, we'll certainly be able to put that on. So we make these videos for you as often as we can. And I get it. I know people don't watch them from start to finish, but if you don't, then you may miss out on something that's important because we give a lot of tips and tricks and fixes during the course of the video. Obviously, I've mentioned before, it's hard to know what everyone wants. We, we just put out a bit of a survey and we got a few responses about our videos, which is great. You know, some people want them shorter, some people want them longer. So, you know, we try and make, you know, videos at last till we fix the problem at least, or, you know, maybe in time, we don't want them to go much over an hour. 
we haven't done too many that do that. So yes, keep watching and you'll learn something. Okay, so the play field's now all done. We've just got to put that back in and we'll, we'll adjust the flippers when we get it in. Now we're onto the motorboard. Now a cursory glance has already shown us that the motor brake, which is located just there, is broken. So we'll have to replace that. That's no big deal. And of course, we'll be doing the modification on this a little later. And we'll show you that. Well, we'll be doing the E relay, which is the uh, 500 point and add bonus unit relay. And the P relay gets involved in that, which is the add player unit relay. Now, we just found an amazing thing, uh, a fuse with where all the, I don't know what you call it, vertigrease, it sort of got inside of it and rolled around. Let me show you. There you go, that's nice and focused in. You can see all that white stuff. I'm not sure what you call that. But it's actually in the glass. So all the fuse was all corroded and everything on the outside. So that'll move. It's all moving around. I've not seen that before. Maybe maybe it is common, but... And the fuse holder was all corroded. I've cleaned that all up. So we had that to do with. And that was on the 25 volt line for power to the coils so we had to do something about that now we're pr before we do that modification we'll take all the relays out as we always do and we'll go through each of them tighten all the stacks check them we've got uh we've got an ax bx relay to do with down here ax of course your reset relay bx is your Last ball relay, so we'll make sure they're all working good. There's the BX one I'm operating it now. It's not too bad. You can hear it. You can hear that click. That's always good news. The AX one's pretty good. So we may only just have to clean the switches and check the they're working okay. We'll tighten all the screws on the motor stack. And look at that big mother of a transformer over the back there. This is a, uh, a German machine. Well, it was meant for the German market. There it is there. It's quite tall and, and thick. It's wide. It's pretty well on its side. That's, that's the main trouble because that's usually the top. Yes. On the, on the other motorboard. <coughs> so I, I wonder if, some, if that was done on purpose or... It looks like a genuine transformer, doesn't it? It's, oh, it's a good one. Yeah, it, you know what? I, I think that was put on in Germany because it's got all Aktung stuff written on it and it hasn't got the sort of Gottlieb part number that we're used to. Anyway, the good thing about the that power, it, it's suitable for us here in Australia. I showed you earlier in the video about how the motorboard had the German writing on it, like it came from the Gottlieb factory. Importer Nova Apparate, Hamburg. So, I wonder if they're still in business. Probably not importing pinball machines, or maybe, maybe they're oh, a big dealer. For sure. Who knows? Now, um, what we've got now is uh, we've got Graham over here working on the coin unit mech um or the yeah. the wiper finger board with the snowshoes all the snowshoes have got to come out and he's using his famous we should pattern that that block of wood and screw to make a fortune so we're going going through all that yeah seven to do got to do one at a time just take your time. It just, it, it does. It takes time, but it's worthwhile doing. Oh, you, you've got no idea the difference once you do it. Could be the difference between having a lot of issues and um, having a, a nice working game. Yeah, and this is one of those subtracting coin unit steps where it looks for the match on each player as it steps back. So it's quite important that it works well. 
if it doesn't, well, that's when you can end up with some problems. Yeah. So what, what you do, you, you heat it up, the solder on it, and then you give it a, a quick bash on the bench, and that'll get every, all the solder off the top of it, and it'll, it'll slide pretty well straight out. So oh, yeah, you can see the little blobs of solder just there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sometimes you just need the pliers to give it a bit of a hand, but usually they come out pretty easy once you get all the solder off. There's a pro tip for you viewers, in case you didn't know. There we go, come straight out. It did too. Yep. Now we do have new snowshoes in stock. Well, these ones are very, very. These good. ones are pretty good. We looked at them before. The reason we're pulling them out is that they were all fairly mm. sticky and bindy yeah. and everything. Like on, on a, um, a coin unit, um, it doesn't get as much wear as it would on a bonus stepper, because it's only pretty well. Um, most times it only works for one pulse you're in a game, but, but multiplayer games, of course, it's more. But with a bonus unit, you haven't. It's going every ball basically. That's why they wear so much on the bonus units, but these ones are pretty good. And of course, the other reason is, is lack of maintenance. Yeah. I've got the, I won't be able to show you because it's on the edge of the bench, but I've got the the rivet plate off this here in front of me. And yeah, it's sort of starting to show signs of wear on some of them, but we'll, we'll clean those up. That'll come up quite nicely. So, other than that, we really haven't found much else wrong here that we have to deal with. So we're going to show you in a, in a short while the modification. So stay tuned for that. One other thing that Graham mentioned that's worth mentioning. This has the three relays here for the coins. So you've got the first coin shoot, the third shoot, and a third shoot delay relay they've got on there. Now I can remember John Osborne telling me that he was responsible for writing up the schematic drawing for the extra stuff they used to put on machines going to Germany. They all pretty well had the, the three shoots. So what they had to do, they had to change the coin shoot arrangements and, and electric circuitry for that. They had to put a different physical score motor in there, so a 50 hertz, just like we use in Australia, and a different transformer, and we've already had a look at that. So they were the main things that happened to exported machines from Gottlieb. I know Gottlieb licensed people in Italy particularly to make games, but they used all their parts, so that's probably not documented by Gottlieb, but this certainly was. So Gottlieb exported a lot of machines. There's no two ways about that, and Germany was a big market mm. for them. And Italy was a big one too. Yeah, so was Italy. So, I guess they were the halcyon days of pinball, and certainly days that we probably won't see again. Right, so now we're on to this fix for this adding the 100 point to each score sometimes on a single player game. And it's just started to rain, I hope that the rain doesn't affect the audio it should be okay so we're looking here at a extract from pin wiki now i mentioned earlier on this was developed by guys like um a guy called steve charland um, there's a guy who gets mentioned in here about some mods to try called Curb from the old RGP, which must have been like a, a chat room or something back in the old days. But anyway, look, you can quickly see that it, um, there have been some reports this can occur on Fast Draws, Two Player Brother Quick Draw, as well as Surf Champ, Royal Flush, and we've seen it before on Jungle Queen. 
Um, in an old RGP post, Curb suggested several switch adjustments that can be made to minimise the problem. These adjustments may not eliminate the problem if you don't want to implement the hack. You can try these. So one was opening the gap of the trough switch under the apron to make sure the switch is only closed when the ball just rolls over the switch. The idea is to have the switch closed for the shortest possible time. Big help. Well, that makes sense. Open the gap of motor 2D so it does not reset the drop target sooner than it has to. That would make a little bit of sense as well. And open the gap of motor 1C, yellow, black and red, white to block the sealing of the J relay. Okay, now I'll point out that on this game, the J relay, which is the 500 point add bonus, is the E for Edward relay. So under the hack, the problem occurs because the 500 point and add bonus unit relay is energized when the drop targets are being reset as the player unit advances. By placing a switch in series with the J relay, we can prevent J from being energized. To do this, add a normally closed switch to the add player unit relay, which is the P for Peter relay, in series with the J relay power. When P is energized, the normally closed switch that will add will open, breaking the circuit to the J relay. So in other words, the J relay can't fire and that will eliminate the problem. So it then goes on to tell you the mods, remove the slate plus white wire from the J relay, leave the wire that goes from this lug to the coil in place, that wire seals in the relay, that's called the lock-in switch. In this game that wire has uh, was brown but YMMV in place of the slate plus white wire. Solder a new wire that's about 12 inches long. Note that the other wire on the switchblade pair is brown, white, red, but got lube, reds fade, so this can't be seen in the photo. Next, add about nine more inches of wire to the end of the slate white wire. That was removed. Now, don't worry, we're going to show you how to do this in a minute. I didn't really have that down low enough, but you can read it there now if anyone wants to take a screenshot of that. And once again, this is available from PinWiki. You simply go to PinWiki and go to Electromechanical and scroll right down to the bottom of the index list and it will tell you hacking a fix for fast draw. Now, there's there a photo of what they're talking about. And then it goes on to the P relay mods by adding that normally closed switch to the end of the P relay. Solder the extended wire plus white wire to one lug. Solder the new wire you added from J to the other lug, and you should salt which you should solder to the lug. Which wire you should solder the lug is immaterial. Here I used a white wire with an orange tracer. That switch is added. Should be arranged. As such, spacer, long blade, spacer, spacer, short blade, spacer, switch stack, backing plate screws. Using the right length screw is important as they cannot impinge on the relay armature. So this is the flip side of that chart. It's just showing you the other, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, the, the P relay there, the switch that's been added to it. And that writing up the top there says new wire from J and extended slate white from J going to, to there. And this one says new normally closed switch. This is on the P relay. Then it goes on just down to tell you be sure to check the gap for each switch on the P relay. Be sure that your new switch is adjusted normally closed and it will open when P pulls in. Note the heat shrink tubing where the slate plus white wire was joined to added to the white plus orange wire. Zip ties were used to tidy up the wiring. Okay, there's an um, uh, updated, there's that picture there, extension of slate and white wire, and an updated schematic was provided by Scott Charles, and the location of the normally closed switch was moved to reflect where it was implemented in the game. Now, there it is there now, um, just there. It's got a bit of a box drawn around it. Okay, now we've seen an overview of this. Let's go and do it for real.
Right, so there's the E relay, which we were talking about the J relay, but it, it on this game is the 500 point add bonus. Mm. And what you can see, uh, Graham's unsoldered that wire. Which usually goes there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the one off the switch. No, no switch on that one. I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, you've removed the wire off the coil. So basically, that was a shorter stack there. Oh, okay. Hang on. That's the P relay we're looking at now. Now, they're the... Them two bottom switches are original. I've put that switch in a normally closed switch off a, off a rack with longer screws. So that's that's been out of the top switch. Yeah, remember we mentioned that? So it's normally closed, okay. And so I've run a wire off each lug. And let's just point out that a normally closed switch, the long blade goes in underneath in a different part of the ladder. Yeah. So they're looking so, at so looking look, at looking at that. That's a normally closed because the short switch is up top on, on top. Over there, that's a long long blade is on top, so it's normally open. So right. when, you, when you go there, so it's if you have a bit of a brain freeze, just think of it that way. Okay, so does everyone understand that? So he's also now soldered a black and a red wire on, which we're using to take now, over to the E relay. Now, I've got to cut them the length yet. Sure. Which is, which is okay. So basically what we've got to do is put one side of it on the power side to the coil, coil. which was that. Okay. And then the other side to that, which will join in heat shrink. And that's the one they were talking about, heat shrinking, yeah. Yeah. And so basically um, this relay, when that relay, um, the P relay is activated, this relay will not work yes. because the power will be cut to it. That's correct. And the P relay is activated when your ball rolls over the troughs. That's right, yeah. So we'll be doing that. So that's the, how you do the modification. We'll show you that all. All nice and tidy. Nice and tidy up. It'll only take a thin, five minutes. We won't, we won't keep. We won't bore you with soldering. Uh, yeah, we won't do that. So, so stand by. I might have just use that one same length on that one. Go to one side. Which is the which is the slate white wire that was removed? I know it's not probably slate white, but well, it's well they're probably thinking of this. Which I suppose you could do it anyway, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're not we're not showing them what we're supposed to be. I think we're fucked up. No? Read it again. 
Oh, Remember, your Y colours are different. Yeah, yeah, I don't care about that. Y colours. Okay, yeah, I might just go that other way. It's probably the same result, but. Okay, so what 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 mistake? What what have you got to do then? Unsolder that slate white. Um. Well. So basically, put that back on, take that one off, Yep. put the black one there, that one goes to the red. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, just amend it and just... Yeah. It gives the same results, but I think they've done this just to tidy it up, I suppose. Yeah. Hey, shrink, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
right at there. Probably one there in the middle. Have you sold that other one on now? It's all done. It's all done, right. What colour was that wire? It was, um... That was, uh, yellow blue, is it, or something? Or? Yellow green, yeah. Mm. Okay, you want to hang Yeah, I just... Out? Yeah. Just, just so we decided to go another way to make it easier. But it's the same result. The yellow green wire has become the red wire, hasn't it? Yep. Yeah. And what we'll do, we'll run the we'll run the game too. Um, in a minute. Right, what we ended up doing, um, the wire that was on the switch here where there's a black wire now, that was actually yellow-green or appeared that colour. We, we actually unsoldered that wire and we put the blue wire back and we've joined it to the red wire, which you just can't quite see. That's the other wire there with a bit of heat shrink on it. There it is there. And that's become the red wire. The black wire is coming back here Maybe to a normally closed switch. A normally closed switch on the P relay. So now, as, as it's standing now, that relay can get power, except when the add player unit relay is activated. Switch opens there. Switch opens here. Cuts power to that relay, so that relay cannot function while that switch, while that relay there is functioning. So that. That's the mod. Now, but, we but probably haven't done one of these for, gee, I don't know, maybe three, three or four years. Yeah, probably three years. Yeah, and I think the last one we did yeah. was a Jungle Queen. I think we've only done four or five. Yeah, we haven't done a lot. I'd so say four or five. Like, it's not be... like we do one every second weekend. Yeah, so it doesn't happen all the time. Don't sort of think, oh, I've got to do that to my machine. No, this it only does, occurs... If it doesn't do it, don't touch if it. If it doesn't exhibit that problem, yeah, don't do it. Okay. All right. Well, Spanky's inspected the completed task and he's quite happy with it so what we're going to do now well just do a little bit more tidying up with a few things on this motorboard mm, it's nearly ready to go and then we'll eventually put it back into the machine now this video would be way too long if we kept troubleshooting continuing so we'll do troubleshooting on jungle queen in a separate video so please remember to give us the big thumbs up on our videos and subscribe to our channel. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bells for notifications and let you know when we go live. And thanks very much for watching. And this has been another Go Shared presentation. <laughs>